He's strong. Project He's Oscar. wacky. He's James the Landscape Designer. Join him as he pours yeah, his heart into transforming Michael's dreary front yard into a beautiful destination for pedestrians and cars alike. Nice, man. What nice, a man. walkway. Got a call from Michael last week. It's a well-established neighborhood, a lot of beautiful gardens around, so I, uh, I got a lot of pressure on me. Just want to make sure I make them look good. Uh, oh, a hedge, that's interesting. This is weird. Uh, this is embarrassing. Oh, great meeting, great start. <laughs> Off to a great start here. <laughs> This must be the door. James Dale. Michael, how Michael, are you? Michael, pleasure to meet you. Well, pleasure we're off to a great you. start here. I, uh, I was knocking on your front door, I thought. That used to be the front door. We did? About it, uh, 50 years ago. As I'm finding out right now. Michael, one of the first issues I'm going to tackle, I think, right away is uh, your identity crisis with the front entrance of this home. You can't tell that the side entrance is the main entrance, so we really have to uh, drum it up and create a visual interest from the street and the driveway. It's a little narrow. It is. Walkway. It is. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should probably widen that. <laughs> in essence, Michael, what are we looking for in the front yard? Number one, uh, we need to have parking. We retain some parking. The front driveway it leads into this great big open parking lot in front of this beautiful old majestic home, but it's this, this, this newer interlock which somebody just haphazardly threw down. Number two, these little shrubs at the front have got to go. It's in public see oncoming traffic, so we okay. need to have a little bit of a, a better sight line. Okay. Thirdly, we need to have uh, an attractive entrance to the house. Currently, it's not. In the summer, um, you can't see the front of the house. It's a nice old house, and we'd like it to be more visible. These two trees probably have to go. Clearing the trees will open this beautiful home to the street. It's a touchy subject, but it's something I want to address well, right away. It's, uh, it is touchy. And, yeah. uh, I think I'll get over the, uh, the loss, but it would be good to replace them with something uh, Absolutely. Um, more appropriate yeah. for the house and the neighborhood. It's a, a very old house, and it's had numerous renovations and add-ons. With all the work Michael's done to the inside of the house, I've got one very important question. Is there a budget left for landscaping? Maybe 50, 60 bucks. Okay. I think I've met my match. You know, I'm, I'm usually the guy who jokes around a lot. I'm getting nervous in front of him. I actually like him so much that I feel like I've known him for a long time. I think we're going to get along really well. Did so, you just call me a mushroom? Michael, give me a hug. Thank you. Back at Dirty Business Headquarters, we're brainstorming how to best serve Michael's needs. At the same time, we're dealing with the number one no-no to anyone who's creative. <laughs> Lower budget. Uh, Keep no the budget money. down. So let's get to it! Looks like the front yard's been hijacked by parking a little bit. Yeah, for, it has. They want to have parking in the front right. and have a, cars go by well, as you well. You should tell them they can't. So they want parking for two, one, two, or three cars. Two, two cars? Two cars, yeah. So, Lauren, this brick, uh, I know it's not happening for you. It's definitely not happening no. for me. It's like a strip mall or yeah. something. So, and there's this uh, sort of ratty looking shrub across the front. Besides adding car parking here, it'd be, it'd be nice to have an, a little bit of a pedestrian entrance. Everybody's walking up this driveway. How many times have we designed a home you're walking up the driveway? You don't want to walk up a driveway, hey, I'm home. Can that all be cleared out? Cleared Open out. it up. Can you get access going on the other? You know how we try to look at things different, like the driveway's right. up yeah. here and the access comes in over here? That's not a bad idea, not I don't think. Idea. To use the front yard a little bit better. But this looks like this used to be the main door, huh? Well, look so. at me, I'm standing in the garden. Yeah, so this, get out of there. This used to be Actually, the. This yeah. used to be the walkway. They, they want to have a better front entrance. There's nothing really working here, is there? I mean, no, this really wall working. was built at one point, this, this was built at another time, and then this was yep. thrown in. So no thought was really put into the design of this front entrance. Armed with measurements and a sense of purpose, I'm ready to tackle this design. The uh, has a certain look, and we've got to sort of fit this uh, front entrance. Uh, make it appealing. Right. Make and it fit into the neighborhood, too. And we want to take away some vegetation, I think, and then add some more that will uh, be more attractive to the house rather than yeah. hide the house. And often, of course, we're reluctant to take a, a mature tree out, but I mean, it's in the way of, of, of parking, and that's really one of the goals of, of Michael here. So They want cars to be able to park, but also get out of the way. If there are two cars, maybe can get out of the way, they can park, pull one up, and we're going to do it in gravel. Or... Gravel really gives a more uh, yeah. um, a romantic feel to the it garden. Does, I... yeah. 
It would be best to have a brick driveway and a gravel parking pad off to the side. It's, it's cost effective, it's right. environmentally sound, it has a romantic feel. The old red brick, the gravel will go beautifully with that. Good luck, Jane. All right, buddy. I'll see ya. Thanks, Lauren. You want? I'm going to give Michael's property a complete drawing board makeover. My aim is to make a beautiful yard despite having to accommodate a landscaper's worst enemy, the car. So the most important part of this design, Michael, is, is creating an entranceway that extends from the street right around, walkway breaking in, wrapping around, and directing the visitors or the mailman or whoever's coming over to the side of the house. The design seems to deal with all the issues uh, that we were concerned about. That's great because the mailman's been complaining. I've delineated this main area with four main trees, smaller ornamental trees, but then as, as you open the door, there's gonna be a focal screen as a backdrop. Oh. And Michael, that space there we're looking at, what we want to do is a focal tree right in the middle of the brick area. What kind of a tree is that going to be? I'm not sure yet, Michael. It's going to be an ornamental, something small. We want the tree to complement the house, not obscure it. My design is going to tie in a pedestrian flow separate from the, the car entrance. Michael likes the plan, so it's time to get to work. Before we can bring in our construction crew, we've got to get rid of those pesky trees. Certain trees do require a permit for removal. Basically, we measure the trees, measure the diameter at, at uh, chest height, make sure it's under 30 centimeters. If it's under 30 centimeters, it's not protected by the tree bylaw. We never remove trees without replacements in mind, and that's what we have for Michael's property. His house is looking brighter already. Of course, when things are going smoothly, that's when a problem rears its ugly head. Lesson number one, don't go off a property survey from uh, the early 1900s. I'm scared of court. I'm sc I just want to make pretty gardens, man. It really sucks when you make a pretty garden on the wrong property. And now that the trees are gone, we can get down to business and tear up this mismatched old yard. While the fellas tear up the site, I've had a chance to compare a design plan with the old property survey. There could be an issue. We've got a bit of a discrepancy between the property uh, map that I've had and the neighbor. Apparently we've gone onto their property and, and kind of taken out a few of their perennials. It's always best to review the basics of property lines and old site plans. I've invited my friend Tom, a professional land surveyor, to the office for some 411. Tom, when's a good time to call a land surveyor? As soon as you get something like this. Yeah, I'm, I've been working off a 120-year-old survey. It's not going to help you very much. When it comes to property lines, you want to be very diplomatic. Uh, if, you, if there's any signs of aggressiveness or you know any sort of you taking it lightly, it, it's going to end up in a court battle, and you don't want that. After you've got all your design and everything done, you're down into the construction phase. Now, that's another time you might want to think about calling a surveyor. If it's not clear where the boundary line is, if there's no markers in the ground, mm -hmm. and you're going to be working adjacent to a property line, it's best to have that line marked out clearly so there's no question, and you know you're working within you know, your client's property. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think most people make the uh, mistaken assumption is, is that they actually, their property goes out to the sidewalk. The city actually owns 10 to 15 feet back from the edge of the sidewalk is part of what they call the road allowance or the municipal boulevard area. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, of course, is when you're working up against a, a property line, which is abutting a neighbor, mm -hmm. you always really want to make sure you have a, a little talk with the neighbor first to make sure that you're both in agreement as to that everybody I knows agree. where the line is. So I just got to be very diplomatic and make this thing work and make everybody happy. You know what? I've made amends with the neighbor and we're going to help her out with a nice new little perennial garden when we're done. Speaking of gardens, it's time to work out a planting plan for Michael's front yard and side entrance. I'm gonna eat my puffs while we're doing this, that's okay. This is healthy, good that's for you. Cool. I think the planting plan is gonna be the most important part of this whole design. What are you thinking? I'd love to put in, you know, I'm thinking about a river birch or a, a canoe paper bark birch mm -hmm. because it's so dark on the facade of that wall. So what I wanna do is put a tree in there that's going to be, sort of illuminate the area and, and sort of pop off the wall. I love it. This planting must be able to break up this little parking area with the walkway. Yep. So I think the best thing to do is to use dwarf Korean lilac. People love dwarf Korean lilac at their front yard because when you're entering a house and guests are coming over, you get that beautiful fragrant flower is that really lasts good. longer than other yeah. flowers, which is great. Over to this quad, I call this the quad area. I really want to use, to tie in with this beautiful hedge, yeah. dwarf cream and lilacs, but in standard form. They're, they're sort of a very, very uh, a regal looking plant. Anything standard 
uh, shows the shows people that you have arrived, and they're used in historical landscapes, and and that's why I want to use them. This house is over 100, probably 130 years old, so that's uh, I thought it was appropriate. Evergreen, four seasons of interest. As you know, evergreens. The more evergreens you use, the less maintenance your garden's going to be. Yeah, I love you. I love working with you. All right, let's go. Right. Let's get the hell out of here. When prepping a base for laying brick on the ground. A pad of four to six inches of gravel is perfect for pedestrian walkways. A pad of six to eight inches is minimum for laneways expected to accommodate cars and trucks. Things have gone pretty well so far. Um, the changes are significant, as you can see. One thing I really was surprised is how intricate the work is and how talented the crew is in actually placing the bricks. I'm glad Michael thinks so. But we've hit a bit of a snag. Uh, well, we're laying the pad, which is herringbone, and uh, we messed it up a little, it was starting to get a little twisted, so we, uh, we decided just to move it up to our square line and start over. This is a good one, all square, and then, then you get a brick like this, that's uh, <laughs> not quite made properly, and then that, that will just mess your pad up pretty bad. All the bricks are perfect choice for that. I, I'm, oh, it works you know, perfectly with that. I got a historical background. I want to tie in a historical home with, with appropriate landscape. Originally, Michael wanted to keep the uh, existing Credit Valley stoop that walk, right. when you walk into the house, but I, I said to him, you know, you are landscaping the whole property. I think we should remove this and, and uh, tune it up a bit. So we got to choose a new stone. Uh, I'm looking for a coping stone now for a client who has a really old established home in a uh, beautiful old neighborhood. So. Um, I'm not sure what I want yet, but uh, something more traditional, uh, chiseled face, you know, it'll tie in with the old home. We have a few different choices. We have the wire tin, chiseled face. Right. So you see how the chiseled face there is what you're talking about when yeah. you overhang the uh, toe edge of a stair. This darker color would match yeah, beautiful. the house beautifully, don't you think? And that's a local stone, isn't it? Yes. So that's kind of cool to use local stone. But I really love the, the rough texture of it rather than the smooth finish. This is beautiful too, but... I do too. And I like the fact that water will sit in the grooves deepens the color when it's uh, wet. That's it. So if you put a sealer on it, that's the type of seal, mm -hmm. color you would get. I mean, when it rains and, and you have these beautiful little puddles forming and you see the birds dancing in there. Pretend in, we're sparrows. In, <laughs> and they're drinking from the little in the puddles. Cast. We put a lot of care into sourcing the stone because it's easy to spoil a great design with inappropriate material. Perfect timing. Tapping at the door. <laughs> Were you trying to get my attention or was that just... No. He's one of the funniest customers I've yeah. ever worked with. The uh, transitioning uh, between the, the driveway bricks and the, uh, the gray bricks and the red uh, walkway bricks is, is excellent. It's seamless. The two different colors also help define the walkway as a separate path from the driveway. Seeing all this great work happen to Michael's yard gets me so pumped up. Nice. <laughs> We're trying to delineate the two properties. It's pretty close together, the property line issue there. Well, we want to put on a row of beautiful beach, and beach hedging is the way to go. They're the most elegant hedge you can actually have in a garden. That's my opinion. Winter interest, and this is one of the main important things that we have in northern gardens. We need winter interest. The, the leaves stick on throughout the winter and you've got that toasty brown foliage. When we tell this to clients, sometimes they don't believe you. And here we are in spring and these leaves are still on from last fall. The old leaves are pushed up by the new growth, but you can see depending on the variety, they do it at different times. These can grow to 200 feet over a few lifetimes, but not to worry in our lifetime. But what I love them Why about is that? because you're never going to reach oh, that far. Because we'll be dead. We'll be dead. But if you plant these right next to each other and you prune them properly, you can cut them off and just shear them every spring. You're going to have an incredible backdrop hedge. Perhaps here's a little clump of birches. These are beautiful paper bark birch. Oh, what are they called paper bark? Black bark. Well, these Black are birch. yeah, these are Betula nigra, right? Which are um, river birch. Right. So, um, with this exfoliating bark, peel, oh, is my tree diseased? I mean, there are a lot of trees that exfoliate like this. You don't peel it off. Pulling off the bark is a no-no. It exposes your trees to the environment and disease. The great thing about these is that they're light in color because the house is fairly dark, so they contrast beautifully. And I think also uh, 
At nighttime, when these are lit up, they would look absolutely spectacular. It's the, the black trimmed house, it's very dark, as we say, this will pop. And I think we should use one, not three. You know, generally you use three clumpings. I think one is good enough. I agree. Local. Yeah, and I think the multi choosing a multi stand one is nice too. It just uh, adds a little bit more drama, some well, we interest. Have to. And, absolutely. and uh, you know, they all have friends, all. You know, it's going to be there for eternity, so, you know, they can all be with each other. This is called the London Plane Tree. And right now, it, it looks kind of plain, but it's not a plain tree. Yeah, it's not a plain tree at all. This is, a, this is an immature one. I mean, you know, it's a 40 millimeter standard size, and uh, it's one size we always plant. But as this tree gets older, Lauren, as you know, man, the bark. It almost looks like a right. paint by number set. Yeah, and it goes from brown to greens to, to all the colors of a camouflage. It's a beautiful tree. You can see it's starting to exfoliate a little bit. Old traditional tree for an old traditional neighborhood. Let's get these plants over to Michael's and into position. This one, I wanted to mimic the neighbors, that's why I chose it. You can see young and old, just two doors down. This is where the design really comes together. Even though the plants and trees are relatively young, they bring the entire property to life. Michael was saying that he's got way too many rotten stumps and trunks and old fencing, so what did I do? I went and got some Boston Ivy. What Boston Ivy does is gonna cover everything. So, you can buy stumps. Our planting plan is never so rigid that we can't improvise on the day and change the placement on site. Plus, it makes me feel important to boss the plants around. When that birch comes in, it's just gonna pop. It's gonna come to come alive here. That is, if it ever gets here. Yeah, I'm so upset that that birch isn't here today. I'd love to just see it in place. I hope the tree gets here before I show the project to Michael and the guys. <laughs> well, we've relayed the bricks. We replanted the neighbor's yard, and guess what? The birch is here, so our problems have been dealt with. We're golden. We took out two trees here, but we put this one back, and it's a lot more airy and light. It brings life to this house. This, light, this house had way too much void brick in the front. It's too dark, now this pops out and makes it uh, look awesome. Ah, the pea gravel is being spread like icing on a cake. A few more touches to ensure the plants are healthy, and I'm pumped to show the boys this dramatic transformation. No, James, I don't even recognize it. This is the same house. <laughs> nice, man. What Thanks, a man. walkway. It's quite, it's a, quite a transition, isn't it? I love this. Not up the middle, like swing out around the side. That's wicked. The house was so dark and foreboding before. Now it's really opened up. It's beautiful. There were some mature trees. We were a bit ambivalent about removing them. Seeing what's, what's been done and adding the paper birch, I think, is a, a huge improvement. I have a little bit of a history background, so it sort of came out when I was designing this garden. You know, I use the heritage brick and some of the more traditional plantings, like the peonies and the evergreen yew hedge. We use the hedgerows of dwarf green lilac, the beach hedging, which you see in England quite often. You really want to go down the walkway. Yeah. Like, it's like, wow, this is a fun kind of feeling to Absolutely. walk through the garden and you get to the front. One of the goals we've achieved here is that we've diverted pedestrian flow around to the proper main entrance to the home. You think the pizza guys and mailmen will know now not to go to the uh, front door? Since the landscaping's been done, there hasn't been any more papers delivered there, and no one's been walking into the glass. Uh, it's really made a big difference for us. There are going to be cars parked here, so even more so you want to use this path. For me, the, it's the pea gravel. I just yeah. feel like I'm in this beautiful Euro garden. I wanted an area where the car could park, but when the car was gone, it would look like a beautiful sort of a, a park-like setting. It really has changed the way the house looks uh, significantly, and it's given it unexpectedly a sense of much more space. The curves and everything is really blends in with the house. It makes the house look really uh, extraordinary. What a perfect lead around, man. I love it. It's calm in here. So nice. Isn't it gorgeous, man? Well, we're standing in, at the front of the house now, and it's changed incredibly. It's a pleasure, actually, uh, to come home and see it. One of the main problems with this house is that it has had no identity for the last 50 years. People have been walking up a driveway. We've used the materials, uh, the flow, the geometry to tie the history of the home and the garden together. This is an intersection. Of course. It's an intersection to the front door, to the front garden, to the back garden. It designates you have arrived at an entrance. The landscaping uh, 
has given the house a whole new complexion. We see it now as a much more inviting place. It seems to fit better into the neighborhood. Expectations were exceeded. We, we couldn't be happier with the outcome. Should we play Nicky Nicky Nine See anybody home? Out of here. Get out. Which way do we go? Buddy, what are you doing, man? I'm out of here. You want down? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to sit with the big bear? The <laughs> <gasps> big bear? No, he's just kidding. Oh, yeah. he's just kidding, that guy. <laughs> 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 Hey! <laughs> 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 <laughs>